Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of History in Jeopardy. We are going to see if our contestants know about their history. My name is Alexis and let's get started. Alright, now let's meet our contestants. Down here we have um, from her parents van. Um, flower patchouli. Uh, yes, a uh, palmini flower. Um, I can't tell from the anachronism here. Where are you six feet over here? Yes, well I'm what many people would like to call a while the movement died out in the early 70s because the goals of free love became too mainstream, mainstream culture is totally corrupt. And the Vietnam War ended, the anti-hate movement societies and free loves were totally far out. Plus, I heard they threw turkey sandwiches at the summer of love were <laughs> totally dirty. <laughs> That's um very inspiring of you, Mrs. Truly. Now, over here, uh, Ms. Bouchard, do I also hear you come from very humble beginnings? Well, yes, Alexis. I grew up in a very small apartment with my single mother <laughs> and one two siblings. When I was at the age of 15, I started in the workforce and I saved enough money to start my own corporation. I built my success from the ground up and I am a firm believer in good management. Now, this, uh, Corporation that would be evil enterprises. Yes, well, evil is an acronym. Yes, 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 yes. I'm sure. Um, I see over here that we have a congresswoman, Mrs. Karup. Mrs. Karup. Karup. Well, Alexis, I now find myself out of a job. Ah, I, I see. And uh, why is that? Well, you see, I was um. I, I was a big supporter of a third global war. You you wanted you wanted a World War Three? Yes, I'm a big supporter of war. I mean, it's good for the economy. So so. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um. And to our next contestant, Mrs. Anne Green. Hello. All right. Um. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself, Miss Anne? I can assure you're a student at Alaska University. Yes. <laughs> All right. Now. Now that we met all contestants, let's get right down into it. Our category for today's History in Jeopardy are... How's the weatherman? Is the new left right? Is all fair in love and war? University protests and free love counterculture. We drew straws earlier, and it is Mr. Shark that will be starting us off. All right, Alexis. I'll take how's the weatherman for 200. All right, for 200. This group of people was organized in 1969 as a fashion of students for a democratic society after its collapse and fragmentation. Their goal was to create a revolutionary party to overthrow the system. Who were the Weathermen or Weathermen Underground Organization or WPO? An American militant radical left wing organization. For 400. This was the campaign that the Weathermen carried out to prove the point that the government had been exploiting other nations by waging war as a means of making America the greatest nation. What is the Palmini campaign? You are on a roll. What will be next? I'll stick with the October 1969, the Days of Rage protest in Chicago, was the first public demonstration entering Kevin Casey with these drivers. No, I'm sorry, the answer we were looking for was the Chicago 7 trial. Alright, Mrs. Patrilli, this is a story. Free love for 200 again. Alright, free love and counterculture for 200 again. This group was opposed to the Vietnam War and featured in colleges and universities to explain this opposition and took part in anti war protests and marches. Me! I mean, what are hippies? Hundreds of thousands lost tears during the summer of love. Easy. What is Kate Nashburn? Alright, shall we take this to 600? I want to take it to 1,000. Double Jeopardy! For 2,000 points, this song. Lonely Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Arts Club Band. It's wonderful to be here. It's certainly a thrill. You're such a lovely audience. We'd like to. Was written by this English group as a transition from the psychedelic comic to the counterculture. What is the spiders? I'm sorry, Flower, but we were looking for the beetle. Imbecile. Hey, take it easy, man. It is so totally non-groovy to call people names, Miss War Lover. Have you ever considered the consequences of the so-called economy booster? 650,000 Americans. 
completely agree with that. Really? You weren't. That was 40 years ago. How old are you? Okay, um, that will bring us to our next category, is the left, right? Mrs. Green, would you like to start us off? Yes, left of four. This was a political movement in the 1960s and 1970s that wanted to implement new reforms on issues such as racial segregation, the Vietnam War, women's rights, and the rights of homosexuals. What is the new one? Successful. <laughs> Quite assertive of you. All right. For 600, the new left proposed these reforms for women, African Americans, and homosexuals. Easy. What is the civil rights reforms? Next. For 800? Yes. Whatever. All right. For 800, this war was targeted for students, protests in the 1960s, because this was the first televised war, which meant Americans were able to view the atrocities on a nightly basis. What is the Vietnam War? All right, well, it looks like Mr. Shark would like to keep going. So, um, for a thousand points, students of the new left believed in this principle. The belief that citizens would join together and work directly to achieve change at the local level in the hopes that it would give power to the people so that they could fight for their own rights and for political and economic changes. What is a participatory democracy? That is correct. All right, well, it looks like we only have one category left, so we'll take a quick commercial break. We'll be back to you real soon. On the next episode of Pain of Protests, we will be examining the free speech movement. Students at the University of California, Berkeley, protested a ban on on-campus political activities. The protest was held by several students, who also demanded their right to free speech and academic freedom. Campus editors formed networks to share information on effective protest methods. Two of these, the Underground Press Syndicate and the Liberation News Service, became productive means of disseminating intelligence. In June, 10,000 students wrote, suggesting the secretary develop a program of alternative service for those who oppose violence. We are back on History and Justice. All right, on to our final category. It's all fair and love and war. Mrs. Shark, I believe we love talking to you. Hi, Ellen. Great to see you. This movement was a college campus phenomenon inspired by the struggle for civil rights and later fueled by opposition in the Vietnam War. What is the free speech movement? All right, that's correct. Well, fellow Calvary. Be quiet, flower child. All right, are we going to take it to the 400 man? You got it. The speech movement had its origins in this organization, whose acronym is CORE. What is the Congress of Racial Equality? That is correct. All right, guys, we have five minutes left, so let's get a move on. The 600 in February. And again in March 1965, SDS organized marches on Lake Terminal, the departure point for many troops bounded to Southeast Asia.
Huh? Root. Let's just finish this up, Alexis. Uh, yes, Miss Congressman. I mean, Mr. Congressman. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm supposed to say thumbs up. After I say World War, 